Hey guys, Mr. Frenchy here. We have another um, Gift Storm gameplay video. We're uh, trying out a slightly different deck list this time. We've exchanged our Merchant Scrolls for Peer Through the Depths. We took out the main deck, Echoing Truth, and replaced it with the second Grape Shot. And we've incorporated some Wear and Tears in the sideboard. The overall logic here is that Merchant Scroll is pretty miserable if we're sideboarding into Empty of the Warrens. And given there's so much um, Death Shadow around right now, Peer Through the Depths might make more sense. Oops, took one out. In sideboard games to find our Wear and Tears, to find our Empty of the Warrens, and there's definitely some advantages to be had by having the White Splash so we can permanently remove enchantments rather than just bounce them for a turn and hope we win in the meantime. Okay, getting into our first game. Oh, this hand's good. We just need to find, um... Well, this hand's borderline. We don't have a creature, we don't have gifts, but we've got a Serum Visions and three Rituals, so let's keep it. Um, part two for the playing against sideboard cards. Playing against sideboard hate is still in the works. I was distracted by very important things that had nothing to do with the Modern Masters draft coming out over the last couple weeks. But yeah, that's still coming, but in the meantime, I thought I'd record a video today for you guys. And while we go through um, these games, we're going to try to keep track of situations where we wish Peer Through the Depths was Merchant Scroll, or where the Peer Through the Depths was Superior Merchant Scroll. And we also have to take a minute to think about the cyber configuration where we have two wear and tear and one shattering spree, rather than bounce spells and two shattering sprees. Okay, our opponent got his stuff sorted out. We don't need more land, so let's both go to the bottom. Okay, I'm guessing this is Bant Eldrazi. Lots of land. Ooh, there's an Electromancer. We've scried three lands to the bottom, so we're going to hold off on cracking this golden turn for now. But honestly, I think this is a good enough reason to do it. Let's, uh... We can fetch for another red source if we need to. Okay, I also don't need these, so we're putting these to the bottom as well. What's nice about this hand is that if he casts the Thought Knots here, he's not really hurting us in any way. The downside of this hand is that we need to draw gifts really fast or we're going to lose. Yep, it's going to be a Thought Knot, but like we said before, this isn't going to really do a whole lot. Okay, if we could stop drawing lands, that would be pretty helpful, but we're just going to pass for now. Maybe I should have played something else to disguise the fact that that's the card we drew, but I think maintaining your life total is pretty important, and we'll probably need a second red source at some point. Unfortunately, by getting these three basics so early, we aren't going to be able to search our library if they cast Path to Exile. Uh-oh.
the bright side, there aren't many lands left to draw on your deck at this point, but... Drown Earth Hope. Yeah, if this is a Drowner, we're very dead, so yeah. Tap, attack for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if he does it. Yeah. Okay, we got a little bit unlucky there and drew every land in our deck. This is a matchup where Wear and Terror, fortunately, is pretty good because they often have, they can bring in artifacts or enchantments for sideboard hate, and this way we have a flexible answer to both. I'm also going to include a negate. We're going to cut these remands. I like the extra grape shot in case one gets exiled by a thought nut seer. And I think our last cut here is going to be a sleight of hand. There's some consideration for playing Blood Moon as well on the plate. Yeah, actually, we're going to try Blood Moon in this game. I'm going to cut a sleight of hand for... Oh, we already cut one. We can't cut both. I'm going to cut an Electromancer. And maybe a Peer Through the Depths. Okay, this hand's great. Hopefully he doesn't remove our Electromancer. If he does, we're in trouble. But if not, we're going to win, so... We're not going to crack this fetch because the third land would be helpful. We're just going to get a basic island anyway, so we're not really preserving your life total. We might eat a path to here. We might eat a path to exile here, but that's okay. Very low in life, we can um, potentially just kill him with Grape Shot Hard Mode if we get a little bit more mana. I'm playing this out into open mana because if all he has is a path to exile, I don't mind ramping up mana a little bit. And it's pretty common for this deck to only have three drops going on. Might also be holding a counter spell in hand. So if he counters Gifts Ungiven, we can just ramp our mana up and cast Past the Flames. And probably just get a great shot kill. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Actually, it looks like we're just slight, a little bit short here. Eight, four, yeah. So we're just going to kill the Hierarch. Shoot him for a bunch, then attack. Flashing back past in flames wouldn't have killed him anyways, so... This allows us, if we draw a ritual, to just kill him on the rebound. And our hand is now fully um, proof against Thought Knots here. Oops, that's not great. But he has to play a creature, he's gonna lose, so let's see what happens.
And the Goblin Beats got there. I don't like Blood Moon as much on the play. And I think an Empty of the Worms is okay. It looks like he's boarding in counter spells, so I'm going to get the Dispel as well as the Negate. I think both the Negate and the Dismember were sideboarded in, plus the Rest in Peace, so yeah, I think I like this configuration. Yeah, we'll definitely keep this. I do like to fetch for a basic island here to kind of put the fear of Blood Moon into him a little bit. Yeah, let's get Peralt. I imagine we're going to get Thought Knotted here. Last turn would have been a good opportunity to cast Rest in Peace if he could, or a 3-drop Eldrazi. Fortunately, this hand is actually pretty proof to Thought Knot. He has to get rid of Path and Flames, that allows us to make a whole bunch of goblins. If he doesn't get rid of the goblins, we have a whole lot of draw steps to draw something good. Interesting. Okay, so we want to use Peer Through the Depth to cat get more mana. Um, I think I like starting with Peer Through the Depths. Ooh, is Grape Shot better than mana? No, I think we need mana more. If we have enough mana to do this, if we put that on top. Okay, so we can generate. We can generate four mana, cast Pass in Flames, go up to three, go up to four, cast Peer through the depths. If we can get another red source, then we're good to go off. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll keep it on top. And for those of you watching who are, don't actually play Storm, let this be a lesson to you to always take the path in the flames. Oh, perfect. So if we cast this, then cast Gifts, we have one floating. If we get three mana, two, and I think we're gonna cast Peer and try to get another Ritual. Oh, that kind of missed a little bit. I think we want these and a grape shot. Or an empty the warrens. 
Hmm. I like empty with the wardens in there. He was pretty afraid of that card. Gives us both rituals, we can just cast Fast and Flames again. Yep. I don't think that was the optimal choice from his perspective, because we I think we can just win here. Yeah, it could go like this. Get another path in flames. A bit of mana. And a grape shot? Yeah. I'm not really certain if Peer Through the Depths is really superior to Merchant Scroll here. But in any event, GG's. Yeah, merchants, so the Peer Through the Depths helped get us the gifts we needed for the exact same cost as the Merchant Scroll would have. And then our second cast of it was more useful than the second cast of Merchant Scroll would have been. However, it missed, so it kind of defeated the purpose. It did help us find a sideboard card, though, which could have been useful if... Yep, jury's still out in that card, but I'll be back for the next game.